Um, she is from the Bay Area in California. There's a lot of questions where she was from originally. And so uh, if you have any other further questions, you can check out her bio. Um, people ask, you know, following up where, where I'm at, what I'm doing. Um, I continue to live in, in Washington, specifically Bellevue. Uh, no, I'm not a felon. Um, the, the case that happened last year is closed. Uh, the majority of the charges were dropped. I took a plea of a disorderly conduct, which is a simple misdemeanor. And I want to let everybody know that I own up to that as a man and uh, made some mistakes and, uh, and chose to do a community service to help uh, high school students uh, write their college uh, transcripts and their college letters uh, for applications. So that's what I'm going to be doing to help out uh, with some community service uh, to obviously uh, for my uh, simple misdemeanor. I we need to have a conversation about former financial executive Justin Costello and how exactly he went from being a marijuana finance executive and CEO to lying to investors and getting ran down on by the FBI last week, y'all. And this story ain't got nothing on Bernie Madoff's site. So sit back, relax, grab your vice, and let's get into it, I right? You are now listening to The Unpopular Opinion, the R-U-O, your girl, Rondo, bringing you the latest on news, politics, entertainment, and more. Like, share, and tap in. What is up, y'all, and welcome to the platform. Now, we have to definitely get into the story of Justin Costello, who was a former CEO of a Seattle-based company named GRN Funds and also a marijuana finance executive because he was arrested for allegedly going on the run following a criminal indictment by the United States Department of Justice. And according to MJ Biz Daily, this story was coming from CNBC, and this matter has been going on for the last past couple of weeks. Now the FBI ran down on him in California around October the 4th because Costello failed to appear at the San Diego FBI office to surrender himself. And this was basically after an indictment was issued on September the 29th by United States attorney's offices in the Western District of Washington and Costello is supposedly a Washington state resident. Now we got to get into the logistics of why Justin Costello is in so much trouble and of According to attorney Nick Brown, he stated in a statement that in a complex scheme involving shell companies, penny stocks, financial services for marijuana businesses, Mr. Costello used Twitter, press releases, security filings, and claims of great wealth to paint a picture of fabulous financial success. In truth, that picture was indeed a mirage. Now the indictment is 25 pages long and it alleges that Costello through a company called Pacific Banking Corp diverted money from three marijuana businesses to benefit himself and his companies. And federal prosecutors also alleged that Costello lied to investors about his wealth, his education, military service, and the assets under management by GR in funds. And this is coming from CNBC as well. And in all, some 29 investors invested directly with Costello and lost, get this shawl, $6 million because they relied on Costello's false representations. So essentially CNBC gave an update on this story this past week, y'all. And the story just gets even crazier because originally they had stated that he had frauded investors out of six million dollars but it's way more money than that involved right now when the fbi ran down on him in a swat team style they not only captured him but his backpack which had gold bars in it worth about twelve thousand dollars each he had sixty thousand dollars in cash and u.s currency he had ten thousand dollars in american dollars worth of mexican peso and if you know the value of Mexican peso to US dollar, y'all know that that is a lot of cash, y'all. And he also had a phony ID when they nabbed him. The amount of his fraud is not $6 million. It is actually up to $35 million in fraud when it pertains to what he was doing. And the lies about his credentials pretty much go into more detail in the CNBC update by stating that he was basically telling investors that he was a billionaire 
and a Harvard MBA graduate and a special forces veteran who was wounded twice in Iraq. Now Costello, who was 42 years old, also had a receipt of a prepaid phone number in his backpack along with the Washington State ID that said Christian Bolter with Costello's photograph on the ID. Now the United States Attorney's Office of the Southern District of California cited that the backpack's contents and other factors in the filing as it urged a judge to remand Costello in jail pending trial and prosecutors argued that he is a serious fright risk and a danger to the community. They also noted that Costello failed to surrender to the FBI San Diego's office as he agreed to with his lawyer on September the 29th as stated before and he had been informed that he has set to face a new indictment in federal court in Washington state on a slew of charges related to schemes mentioned before by Biz Daily involving the penny stocks and the shell companies and the cannabis businesses. Instead, he became a fugitive. Now the FBI stated that they eventually was able to track down Costello through location information received from their theft recovery service for the Alfa Romero vehicle he was driving. So basically they had tracked him through his car. The SWAT team tracked the car to a remote area of El Cajun, California, where they saw him walking, wearing the backpack. And when the agents arrested Costello, it is said that he was surprised that agents had found him because he had turned his phone off. Now, why didn't he just surrender himself from the beginning? He told agents, supposedly according to CNBC, that he had recently had a stroke and needed time to recover. Now, prosecutors said that the FBI soon after learned that the gold in the backpack was part of a larger quantity of gold worth $94,000 that Costello purchased back in April using money he had stolen from a banking client. Investigators have determined that since mid-September, the accused stopped using his only known personal bank account for personal expenses and instead was using multiple corporate accounts in an apparent effort to cover his tracks online. Now the update also stated through CNBC that he also has ties to La Jolla, California and Las Vegas and is accused of stealing and scamming thousands of investors and others out of millions of dollars by making false claims that companies he controlled had plans to buy 10 other firms. Now, Costello had the audacity to plead not guilty Tuesday during his arrangement in San Diego Federal Court, where he had a lawyer from the Federal Defender's Office appointed to him to represent him, the court records do show. The lawyer, whose name is Cindy Morrow, asked that the hearing on the question of whether to detain Costello until trial be continued until October the 18th, and the judge, Daniel Butcher, granted her request according to the court filing so he will be back in court on october the 18th and the nasty cherry on top for costello is that he also faces a civil lawsuit filed by the sec on the same day that the criminal charges against him were unsealed and that suit largely tracks the claims in the criminal indictment yikes this shit is crazy y'all and i'm gonna be very honest and transparent this is exactly why federal banking regulations get stricter and stricter this is why banks ask more and more questions this is why they probe and this is why they consider certain businesses to be high risk and many of these type of businesses who are involved in maybe gambling or marijuana he was basically involved in the marijuana business. This is exactly why they're considered high risk. And these are the type of businesses that get shut down by the banks. They basically get demarketed and get told, listen, we do not want your business anymore because it just becomes too risky. Then they get involved in situations like this, where not only there are civil lawsuits or civil indictments, they also have criminal indictments in cases. The banks do not like buying themselves problems. I'm gonna be very real and honest with y'all. They really don't. And these type of people who basically demand that you do business with them bring on problems. I'm pretty sure he was giving a lot of people within banks problems because he needed a way to honestly get these cards and move this money and make these pieces hit. I really wanted to do this story because I don't want it to seem as though that only a certain face that is melanated that those are the ones who are the crooks all the time 
scamming is a equal opportunity employer i'm gonna be very honest and real because everybody no matter the ethnicity or nationality or race they scam like i'm gonna be real they they do it just is what it is the last thing you want to do is pretty much fake sec filings like this is the type of stuff that you don't want these are not the stains you want on your jacket because i'm telling you playing with the feds when it pertains to money will definitely land you in jail definitely will land you in jail now before a lot of the ceos were able to kind of really get away with this um, we seen this in Netflix dirty money like as I've always said before but now it just seems like all the crooks are getting hooked up especially when it comes down to financial crimes it just is what it is they locking people up and they're making examples out of folks but let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments drop down and let me know if you're able to comment and tell me make sure if you're watching this on youtube that you are hitting the like button to get us out into the algorithm make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with the notification bell hit for all new videos and live streams and make sure you share this and tell a friend to tell a friend i love y'all y'all take care and y'all be well peace